Well, well, well. It's been 17 years since I last saw a Halo game start off this way. But today, our journey begins with the Master Chief getting an armor test. No one has been brave enough to attempt this ever since Halo 2, because the last two dudes to attempt this died only minutes afterwards. The position of armor tester has been deemed as cursed as the defense against the dark arts teacher's position at Hogwarts, but it'll take more than superstition to stop Atriox from helping me out. What a good guy. I passed the physical test with an outstanding perfect score, so now it was time for the environmental hazard resilience test, so he threw me into space and I pass out. When I woke up, Atriox was gone, and Mr. Spanish Man was shining a flashlight in my face. Look up. Look up. Excuse me? Luke Cup? I couldn't understand what he was saying, because I can't speak Spanish. All I knew for sure was that he was a dirty, rotten, no good power supply thief. He stole the power supply from my suit to power his pelican, which is probably stolen too. And now he was trying to blind me with a flashlight. I didn't feel safe one millimeter, so I played along with his shenanigans, I told him I had some spare energy in the cockpit that he could steal, and when he fell for it, I took my chances and jumped into space. I was pretty lucky that this alien ship was chilling here, so now that I'm safe and sound, let's discuss some rules. In a nutshell, grapple shot only means killing enemies with any attacks using only the grapple shot. Whether it be the follow up melee attack after you grapple an enemy, the grapple punch attack, pushing an enemy into the abyss, or defeating an enemy with the damage from the AoE attack after fully upgrading the grapple shot. Also, I can use equipment as long as I'm using it for defense and not for offense. Without further ado, let's see if you can beat Halo Infinite with only the grapple shot. The first three missions were all about getting a feel for the grapple shot, and seeing how effective it was against the many different enemy types I would encounter throughout my quest. If I'm being honest, most fights in this game are pretty similar, so I'll mainly be discussing the boss fights, and the other fights that weren't bosses, but felt just as hard. Speaking of problems, we're already at our first one in the challenge. Thanks to exposition, it was pretty obvious that Atriox was dead at this point. If it wasn't for these goddamn aliens always trying to kill me, no one would have to take the risky job of armor tester and die unnecessarily just to hear something I can figure out on the battlefield. So to honor his memory, I decided to blow up the ship, but in order to do so, I had to destroy two fuses. I tried using the grapple shot, but it does a whole lot of nothing to them, so my plan was to get the enemies to destroy the fuses for me. I killed most of the enemies in the area, but I would leave just one alive, then I would jump up here and wait for them to throw a grenade, and when they did so, I would dodge and they would blow up the fuse for me. I repeat the same process for the second one, we meet the main antagonist of the game, Eshram, whose name sounds like I shit come. He's bald and annoyingly screams every line of dialogue. Set a fire in your heart, Spartan. Bear your fangs. Fight hard. Die well. From here, you can ignore every enemy until we escape the ship. I hitch a free ride with the Pelican, even though I'm technically paying for the ride with my energy, and with that, we make our way to Zeta Halo, where we would encounter our first of many bosses. But before I do that, I would acquire Cortana 2.0. She wasn't the original, but she was goddamn adorable. 10 out of 10 would press E to insert the chip again. After that's all said and done, we come to our very first boss fight in the game. Tremonius the Thick. Jets. The tricky thing about brute boss fights is they have regenerating shields, so I couldn't afford to be a pussy or else they would regain their shields. Shields are too annoying to deal with, so as soon as my own shields refilled, I would search for Tremonius the Terrible, then I would grapple to him and turn Tremonius the Thick into Tremonius the Trashed. When I made my way to the surface, I upgraded the grapple shot twice. First, to stun any grappled enemy, which would really come in handy, and the second one was to reduce the cooldown of the grapple shot by 40%, which would make combat so much faster. After I killed all the enemies, I cleared an LZ for our nameless Spanish companion. 
I'll just call him Senior Taco. Yes! 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 He picks me up, and now we're making our way to a tower to investigate a UNSC signal. After I did some exploring, I made my way to the tower as fast as possible. A UNSC signal meant a high probability of meeting a soldier who actually spoke English. I was eager to talk about some anime titties with another gent, but when I got there, all I found was some stupid looking monkey boy named Chakadaka stunting all over the place. It was perfectly clear that I would have to kill Smelly Kaka. First, because of his less than impressive parkour, but also he's been torturing my new best friend Spartan Griffin. He looked as though his ass had just taken 10 dicks. I couldn't stand to see him like this. He was so cool that he allowed me to have his threat sensor before we even met, so I had to return the favor. I was actually pretty terrified because Chewbacca is using invisibility and a sword. Not a good combo on heroic difficulty. But thankfully, one shot melee kills isn't a thing anymore. At least for right now. In fact, he chopped up my Spartan ass three times back to back, but lo and behold, I was still alive. Before I came here, I made sure to collect Spartan cores so I could learn the ancient art of the old one-two punch. First discovered in 1960 and implemented in Bioshock, basically you electrocute your foe and then you hit them with a blunt object. Preferably a wrench, but all we have in this challenge is our meat hooks, so it'll have to do. His shields are very powerful, so the grapple punch was the perfect attack for him. When I destroyed his shields, it only took me 3 total hits before I punched Coat Rack Soul back where it came from. I save Spartan Griffin, he tells us about a banished dig site, and then he dies before we can even discuss the anime titties. I came here all for nothing. Senior Taco tries telling me something, but I completely ignore him since I know Comprehendo, and then I make my way to the dig site. When I arrive there, the banished try to shoot me with their laser. I decided to return the favor by killing everyone and disabling the laser. In order to do so, I have to destroy 4 cooling pylons, but since I have my grapple punch ability, I can destroy them all without a problem. A few minutes later, I return to the tower to disable the laser, but Bassus the Brainless attacks me. Spartan's not so tough, I think. Break open easy. Bassus the Bumbling Buffoon was intimidating with that hammer, but unlike Chocolate Cock from the last mission, Bassus has weak shields and a ton of health. He can also kill me really fast, usually in a single hit, but I got extremely lucky because now he was Bassus the Broken Back. I think the velocity of my grapple punch was too much for the little guy to handle, and he ended up exploding his spinal cord on the wall. The poor guy even brought his helmet to work today, but he still suffered a fatal injury. But oh well, the floor eats his corpse, we disable the laser, and head underground. Nothing really special happens down here besides me getting the drop wall ability and discovering the skimmers. They're super easy and usually only take a single grapple punch to die, so in no time I meet the Harbinger and I finally understand her purpose in this game. She said she's gonna leave a like and a comment on the video and subscribe to my channel, and you guys should consider doing so too. And with that, we reach the surface again. Man oh man, it's the first hunter fight in the game. They may be sexy as hell, but don't be fooled. They're only 3% sexy and 97% pieces of shit because they take about 15 minutes each to kill. Other than them being bullet sponges, there's nothing special about these guys. So in 30 minutes, I killed them both and made my way to the top of the tower. A cheerful monitor decides to escort us, but once he finds out we want to destroy God's hula hoop, he decides to escort us to our deathbeds. At first I was worried because this is the first enemy in the game that I couldn't grapple, but thankfully the grapple punch's AoE attack can damage the robot. Easier said than done. This boss fight took me 2 hours to beat for 2 reasons. The first is that he has a melee insta-kill that you have zero chance of evading. The second is that I must have clipped through the map at least 10 billion fucking times because if you use the grapple punch at an angle of 30 degrees or less, you have a chance of clipping through the map, and the only way out is death or quitting to the main menu. 
It really broke my soul when I made significant progress and then the game decides to screw me over. Eventually, I figured out that the best way to take him out was to attack him around the pillars at the back of the room, because doing so I had a lot of cover and it made it easier to grapple punch him from a 45 degree angle or higher. I did this over and over again until I finally beat his ass into scrap parts, I shut down the spire, I get a ride from Senior Taco, we get shot down, and now I had to take out three anti-air guns. Taking out the three AA guns was super easy. You just disable them, I shit come screams like a babbling idiot, you destroy a glowy thing, and now I had to make my way to the Spartan Killer's boss fight. I was already exhausted from my last boss fight, and now I had to fight two brutes who are insanely strong, and a bunch of reinforcements. I just couldn't get a win today, boys. Right off the bat, I could tell Hyperius the Hemorrhoid was the strongest of the two, and there was three reasons why I needed to deal with him first. He had a chopper with an insane rate of fire and a very high damage rate. He also uses a Ravager, which is far more dangerous than the scrap cannon that Torvarus is using. And unlike Torvarus, Hyperius moves around the map, so I could lure him away so the two of them couldn't tag team me. My strategy for taking out Hyperius was to attack him three times. Attacking him twice takes out his shields and does a little bit of health damage, and the third hit would only do health damage. Then, after I barely escape with my life, I would hop in and out of a vehicle, which seems to speed up the acquisition of checkpoints. I would repeat this process until I delivered the final blow. Next, I had to take out Torvarus the testicle, but he was far easier than Hyperius was. Thanks to him standing on the platforms, I didn't even have to do direct hits to damage him. And dodging the scrap cannon is super easy, so I could do consecutive hits to him without ever putting my life in danger. Within 4 minutes, Torvarus was also trashed. Unfortunately, Senior Taco was still alive, and he seems to be upset about something, but I don't speak Spanish, so I get Cortana 2.0 to translate for me, and she said that he said that he was sick of stealing things. He stole the energy from my suit to power his pelican, the pelican that he stole. Maybe I couldn't understand his language, but I could understand his feelings. It takes a real man to admit to his mistakes, so after a confession like that, I would allow Senior Taco to steal one last thing. My heart. So now, Senior Taco and I were best friends. Nothing in the world could have prepared me for the hardest mission in the game. In the first part of the mission, I had to fight Adolescent Circumcision again, but this time he has upgrades. He's honestly easier this time around than he was the first time, because there's a lot more cover here, his ranged weapons seem to be a lot less effective, and the sentinels that help him are pretty much useless. Except for this one, which sniped me in the back of the head when he was almost dead. But the reason why this fight took me another 2 hours was because I would not stop clipping through the floor. I'm not even exaggerating when I say it must have happened at least 20 billion times. But eventually, after enough hit and run tactics, I finally defeated him. But nothing could have prepared me for what was waiting at the top of the tower. A goddamn phantom. To proceed, you have to destroy the phantom but the grapple shot can't grapple phantoms for some reason. I was devastated. I had endured so much suffering that I just wanted to give up and cry. But did Frodo give up when he was looking like a crack whore going through withdrawal? No. He manned up, got Sam to carry him, and he destroyed the ring. You know why? Because giving up is the least logical action. But, but Dom, you can't grapple the phantom. It's impossible. Ha! Like that'll stop me. Have you forgotten? I'm controlling the Master Chief. He destroyed 500 ships between Halo 1 and 2. He makes the impossible possible. One ship? That's easy work. It may have taken me an hour and 45 minutes to perfect the strategy and make it consistent, but this is what I did. I would stand beside the power weapon ammo station, which would lure the ship over to the left side of the structure. Then I would go here and peek out just enough to where I could see the ship. Then I would wait for it to move into position and wait for it to come as close to me as possible. And then I would grapple here, swing past it, 
and when it turned to face me, I would grapple to the lowest part of the extended wall and grapple punch it. And bam, you see that? That's a hit marker. If we can hurt it, we can destroy it. Of course, this attack does so little damage that it took me 2 hours to destroy it on Heroic, but at that point, I didn't have the strategy down perfect. So when I destroyed it, I was so fucking pumped, but when the other two came, I died inside. Just a little. At this point, I turned the difficulty down to easy mode, just so it wouldn't take as long, but I would also use their numbers to my advantage. Since there's two of them, I could board a phantom and let the other one hit it with a salvo of plasma fire, and I made sure to alternate between the two of them so they would die at almost the same rate. The first one was finally destroyed by his bro, and the second one died only after a few grapple punches. Aw yeah, yeah! But hang on, I couldn't celebrate just now, because after I disabled the entire Spire network, my new best friend, Senior Taco himself, was face to face with death. He gets captured, so we teleport to save him, and we end up underground. I fight my way through the facility, I grapple past everyone on the outside, and then I make it to the House of Reckoning. In the House of Reckoning, I had to fight through a few arenas, which I thought was cool as fuck, until I had to fight some banished hunters. They're super annoying, because they're a lot more stronger and a lot more aggressive than normal hunters. It takes a little more effort to finish them off, but eventually I killed them, and then I confronted the beast who stole my best friend. Its name? Jaga Radomni. I was kinda disappointed because Mega Hummus Eye is exactly like Chocolate Cock. Strong shields, weak health, and a melee focused opponent. Within 3 minutes, I settled the score, I rode the elevator, and god damn it, it was Senior Taco. What are you doing? This is no time to hang around. But it was too late. I should come dropped into the place. He shouted because what else would he do? And then our battle began. Honestly, his first stage is super easy because he's using a scrap cannon of all things, he walks as fast as my grandmother, and he doesn't even have a shield. Granted, my hits do like 1 or 2% damage per hit, but that was easy work. Even when he activated his useless shield, I would just destroy the fuses on the wall and it was bye bye shield. Although, my cockiness would be short lived, because once his health hits halfway, it was time for phase 2. And my god, he goes from very easy to incredibly scary monkey with a hammer. Eshiram wants you to prove your legend? Time to prove it! The gravity hammer is almost always a one shot. Even if he misses the insta-kill, he moves so fast that he would finish me off immediately. What I ended up having to do was play the scariest game of hide and seek tag in my life. This little area provides good cover, so I can cut off his line of sight for me, which saves me from getting attacked, but also lets me surprise attack him. I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure his health regenerates if it gets very low, so I had to be quick about attacking him, but I also had to be extremely cautious because obviously he insta-kills you, but also if you attack him too soon after a previous attack, he doesn't brace himself and instead one-shots me. So I would let about 10 seconds pass between hits. 90 minutes later and I finally fisted his asshole across the room. I freed my best friend, Senior Taco, and now we had to go to the auditorium and kill the Harbinger. Oh yeah, remember her? She's a part of the game too apparently. I killed all her lackeys and then I turned it down to easy mode for the hunter fight because I didn't feel like fighting them for another 40 minutes. So I killed them, I turned it back up to heroic, and now it was time to fight the harbinger. For some reason, this is the easiest boss fight in the game. Sure, it's creative, but all you have to do is bring down her shields, punch her, she fucks off, you fight some waves of enemies, and then you repeat the process until you deal the killing blow. We escape the place, Senior Taco tries telling me something, but I can't understand him, and with that, we beat the game. So can you beat Halo Infinite with only the grapple shot? Yes, this challenge is 100% possible and 200% painful. 
Well, consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next one.